was so nice to be back at the secret garden again for another trip, but conditions were far from ideal. It was freezing cold. The lake was iced over and we had no choice other than to wait for it to thaw out before we could even start fishing, but eventually that did happen. Morning everyone. Good night's kip anyway. Got the coffee pot on. Need one of those. But um Yeah, quiet night. But um yeah it's it's cold at the moment, really cold. I mean it's frozen frozen over when we got here yesterday. So uh yeah it's not surprising really. Oh, I love the smell of fresh coffee in the morning. One of the joys of being out on the bank, isn't it? The first brew of the day. I do love a cup of tea normally, but um, yeah, need a coffee to wake me up, I think. Yeah, not sure what's going to happen this week. You know, everyone always thinks that um, coming to little lakes like this, like the Secret Garden, it's just going to be easy. But of course, you know, there's still carp. And uh, I know it's been very cold for about three weeks now. And uh, Jean Noel stopped feeding the fish actually about three weeks ago. He feeds them through the winter normally. And uh, yeah, he'll feed them 30, 40 kilos of like pellet and boilie and maize couple of times a week but you know when it got really cold he stopped feeding them so me fishing the pond at home when you stop feeding them when it gets really cold they do go a bit dormant so I mean I'm thinking that that's probably what's happened to the fish here you know I'm always hopeful um, and it's uh, still early days anyway you know it's there's plenty of time to go and it, it's due to get a bit better as the week goes on to gradually warm up a little bit every day until it's sort of 13 14 degrees something like that so you know that's much better conditions but weather is going to happen soon enough for them to start getting the reds down you know I'm still so I reckon you know sometime during sort of proceedings I'm, I'm going to get a bite or two you know it, I just think I will but um, it's not going to be easy, that's for sure. But it's certainly nice to be here. And yeah, I'm still going to be out by the waterside here, as cold as it is. You know, Joan's not as daft as me. <laughs> she's she's in the house, and uh, who can blame her? It's lovely and warm in there. She's got the telly, and uh, you know, she's having a good kip in there. But but yeah, it's it's just nice to be out by the the water. No matter what conditions are like, looks very quiet out there. You know, it's like a mill pond out there, and there's not really a ripple, there's not a bubble or anything. And I just imagine those fish down there, just, just laying very still, really, close to the bottom, just sort of in winter mode, in winter shutdown mode at the moment. I'm just going to hope that things improve as as the days go by. I mean, either way, you know, it's just, just nice to be here. It's always nice to be here. It's a lovely place, this. really is. Proper chill-out place. You know, you can just come, shut those gates behind you, and uh, the rest of the world doesn't exist when you're in here. Which is always nice. So, well, I'm going to have my coffee. Still lay here for a bit, I think, and... Uh, yeah, think about getting up in a while. There's no rush, is there? 
that's the beauty of fishing. You know, people say to you, oh, you've got to be up at crack of dawn watching the lake and stay up late watching the lake. and There's plenty of time for all that. This is fishing. It's meant to be enjoyable. So I'm going to lay here for a while and enjoy it. Yeah, I've got to say, this is a proper bit of kit. I've used bait boats before and uh, yeah, at the right time they're really handy bits of kit. Um, I've got to say, this is different league, this one. This is a Rolls bait boat and uh, yeah, Rolls Royce is more like it. Yeah, so I'll just do a little quick demonstration on I mean, the, the boat. I mean just presume I've got a rig in the boat there I haven't um, but I have got my my waypoints all loaded these are one two three four for my four rods uh, and there it's got a sounder on there I haven't got a sounder on at the moment but um, I've, I've gone out to various spots found where you still have to choose your own spots do you know what I mean you know they make life easier but you still gotta find your spots you still gotta choose your bait uh, how much bait where to put it this that and the other so the boat can't do all that it used to have to do all that um, but what it does is make life a lot easier so I've actually got my spots sorted where I want them to be and say I want to go to spot four literally I just press on driving to target and there it goes it goes off to uh, spot number four which is my left hand rod the boat just goes straight out to the saved waypoint which arrived at target coming home the little red home point there just press that mode come home and the boat turns around and just comes back how good is that it's lovely I love new toys there we go even by my winter standards, I'm not using a lot of bait. I've just got the rig in there and a, a few of the house pellets. Um, not much at all. Yeah, the fish just, they're only just waking up. So putting out a big bed of bait, it's just not the one at the moment. Crumbled boilies, these are the new one on test. They're nice and soft, so they're easy to crumble up. And so what I'm trying to do is get a bit of flavor out there. The pellets break down anyway, quite quick. So what I end up with is a bit of flavour, but not actual much in the way of food out there. Plenty of smell when it drifts down and lays on the silt. Plenty of attraction and uh, yeah, just basically one decent food item. Still just a couple of freebies, a bit of citrus pellet. And that's literally it. That's about, altogether, it's about a handful. Uh, but that's all I'm going to put out because, yeah, it's, they're just not feeding. They're just waking up. Another week, and I'll probably be putting twice that amount out, probably three or four times when they start to turn on a little bit. But at the moment, it's still early days. So just putting out enough to get me a bite. We're still getting very cold nights. It's down below freezing every night. And uh, I think it was minus two last night. And although it's improved quite a bit on what it was uh, when we first got here, it's taken a long time for that water to warm up. You know, I sent the uh, bait boat out yesterday and on there it, it shows you the water temperature and it was hovering between four and five degrees. So. At the moment it's still just too cold I think and um, it sort of summed it up when Jean Noel, the owner, uh, he turned up yesterday afternoon and he was saying that 
his pond, he thought he'd lost his fish. He's got some koi in his pond. And he looked in and they weren't there. He thought he'd lost them. And uh, when he searched a bit harder, they were, they was actually half buried in the, the silt on the bottom in amongst the sort of, you know, bits of weed and sort of debris on the bottom. And they was literally, yeah, sort of hiding away, half buried. So yeah, that sort of oh, just tells its own story. And I think that's what's happening out here in the lake. Because, you know, the normal thing on the morning is to have a walk round and, uh, especially if it's been quiet, just have a walk round. And you can normally see little signs of movement, you know, a few ripples or, you know, just odd bubbles, something, some sort of sign of where the fish are. And I've done that two or three times. This is uh, third day now. I've done it every day, two or three times. And I've literally not seen a bubble, not seen a ripple, not seen a fish. I put the drone up in case they were coming up in the upper layers. And uh, yeah, I've just literally not seen a sign of a fish yet. So um, yeah, it's not great, is it? But yeah, I'm, I'm forever hopeful. Um, you know, I, I'm not doing too much with the rods. I, I think that's an important lesson I've learned in the past that, you know, if it's not happening, don't think you've got to change your rods and baits and spots and everything, you know, try, you know, trying different spots. Sometimes it can help, you know, perhaps you can find fish uh, on shallower or deeper spots, you know, and, and it might work. But the problem is when you're starting to move around, you end up with patches of bait all over the place. And if the fish aren't feeding heavily or are hardly eating at all, like at the moment, um, you're just lessening your chances, basically, you know, the more bait and areas you've got out there, the less chance of your one being picked up. So, um, yeah, so basically what I'm doing, I've, I've redone them once since I've been here now. So and I, I'm, I'm going to leave them as long as possible until I can see a good reason for moving them, really, you know. I, uh, I know the bait's not getting eaten. I had a little look down one of my margin spots. I was able to put a camera down here yesterday, and it, it's all there. It's all there untouched. So there's no point in putting, you know, more bait out there and changing spots because, yeah, it's just not going to do any good whatsoever at the moment. I, I just know it's not. You know, I've got to sort of sit on my hands a bit, and yeah, I'm, I'm just playing the waiting game now. You know. The weather is improving slightly every day, you know. I mean, I just feel like there's going to be a trigger point where uh, the water temperature reaches a certain point and the fish just wake up, you know. I'm just hoping that's why, while I'm still here, because next week the weather actually looks like it's going to be a lot better. Um, there's, there's a lower front moving in towards the end of the week. The temperature's going to be rising. The cloud cover at night is going to help. And I just feel that next week is the time to be here. This week, high pressure, clear. I mean, there's not a cloud in the sky. Literally, there's not a cloud anywhere. And, you know, so you can imagine what it's like at night. As soon as it's dark, the temperature drops. It's frost every morning. The little pools that are in the shade are frozen. They've been frozen since we got here. What do I do? Well, I've just got to sit it out and hope that conditions improve, hope that the fish start moving. Um, this is, yeah, it turned it so far, this is the toughest trip I've had here. I've never had conditions like this. I've been here December time, I've been here in February, and I've always caught. So, you know, I've got every confidence that I am going to catch. Um, but at the moment, I just need to, uh, <laughs> pray to the carp gods that uh, yeah it keeps warming up and it's just enough to to get them fish moving again but um yeah yeah it's, it's tricky at the moment that's for sure
Right, so Wednesday today, and uh, yeah, it's a little bit like Groundhog Day at the moment. Uh, it's another nice sunny day, a uh, little bit of a breeze today, not quite as hot in the sun, there's a little bit of sort of misty cloud up there, not thick, um, but yeah, otherwise pretty similar. Yeah, still no action yet, unfortunately. Uh, things have changed a little bit. We were sitting here yesterday afternoon and I just happened to be looking straight out there and, and bosh, the fish boshed out sort of late afternoon. And yeah, I mean, that was, that's a brilliant sign. Obviously, it means that, you know, fish are starting to wake up, albeit very slowly. You know, they certainly, I'm starting to realise um, what a cold snap we've had here for, for weeks on end and how much it shut the fish down and they certainly have been shut down and it's going to take longer than what I thought for them to wake up. But they are waking up. Uh, I, I was laying in bed, I suppose it must have been about 11 o'clock last night and I heard one bosh out there. And uh, I thought, right, that's another one. Couldn't quite tell where it was. Uh, but I sat up and then heard another one and I, I walked halfway down the lake because I thought it was down the far end and I could see the ripples coming across and it was sort of more sort of midway down, halfway down. So, but yeah, two shows and so, you know, there, there was definitely three proper carp shows out there between sort of yesterday afternoon and uh, mi midnight-ish. What that means is that fish are at least starting to move about a bit. Uh, when when the fish showed out there yesterday afternoon, I did put a bait straight on it. So that, that's the only rod I've moved. The others, I've, I've left them all in place. Uh, but the rod that I had down, sort of towards the far end, I, I've looked down there and um, I just don't think there's any fish down there. I could be wrong, but I just don't think they're down there. I, I feel like they're more up this end of the lake. And uh there's no point in you know i spoke about this before there's no point in moving all the rods and baits around different spots because that's not the answer the, the answer will be when they wake up and start looking for food but when i saw a fish jump it could be the sign that there was a lot more fish there so it was worth putting one on that spot obviously um, but that's been there 15 hours now and you know that hasn't gone off so you know obviously things are taking a lot longer than what I hope they might um, I've just had a walk right around the lake and you know it's what I do every day at least once a day sometimes two or three times and it's what I advise everyone else to do when they come here you know have a walk around every day because as small as it is um, the smaller the lake is, the smaller the spots are normally, and it's so important to be right on the fish, you know, they can be grouped up, and you generally, we, what I say is, you always see signs. When you go around, you'll see signs, either you'll see a fish, or you see signs, or you see bubbles, and that sort of pinpoints where you've got to be that day. Well, um, yeah, I mean, there's literally been no signs, there's been no bubbles, there's been no actual sign of a fish. Apart from those three shows, there's been, there's been actually nothing to go on. So, yeah, it's a tricky one. It really is tricky and it's unusual because it's the first time I've been here when it's been like this. You know, the winter trips I've had before, um, you know, I've caught fish, I've been able to see signs and, and they've been active. but. It just shows, it's just a sign of what a real cold spell um, over a period of weeks that they've had here, you know, and and the fact that because it froze over, um, they haven't been fed for three weeks, so, you know, fish do go into shutdown mode. I've seen it in my pond at home, but when you get a real cold spell, normally the fish will feed all through the winter, but if it gets really cold, um, they will shut down and if you stop feeding them they, they go really dormant and it, it can take a little while to sort of get them out of that and well the one thing that does get them out of it is is the water warming up um, that's something I'm going to check today actually the other day the water temperature I, I haven't done it today I've just reminded myself there that um, the water temperature the other day was hovering between four and five degrees and it's just too cold, it's just too cold. Um, 
I'll check that in a minute and see if it's gone up. You know, hopefully if it's gone up to sort of six, I know it's heading the right way and I've still got three nights, so, you know, hopefully um, it'll keep going up and, you know, if I can get one or two fish before the end, it'll still be a good trip uh, in the conditions. You know, you, you can only gauge a trip by what you're faced with and, you know, you, you come here in the summertime, you're obviously expecting to get action every day and even good winter trips, that, that can happen. This is a different challenge and, you know, I, I, I'm always up for a challenge and uh, I'm still confident I'm going to get one or two. You know, it's just a matter of, um, it looks like it's going to be at the back end of the trip. You know, I'm just waiting for that temperature to hit a, hit a point where the fish all of a sudden wake up. Well, they've started to wake up, but you know, where they're starting to look for a bit of food. Um, so right, yeah, let, let me, let's do that now. Let's get the boat out because the boat's got a thermometer on it. Like I say, it's between four and five the other day. Let's see what it is now. Well, that is really interesting actually. I don't know if you can see that just down in the, the bottom corner here but it's 7.5 degrees and it showed that up straight away in the edge and I thought, oh, well, maybe it's just in the edge. It was showing 7.6. Uh, so I'll put it out in the middle. It's a bit bright, the sun, but I'll put the boat out there in the middle and it's just sort of drifting around. And that is 7.5 out there. So that's, well, that's really interesting. Now, I know that's only a surface temperature, but the surface temperature the other day was between four and five degrees, and it's now 7.5. So I reckon that's gotta be close to to being, I reckon eight degrees is, is when the fish will be up and about. That's, you know, I've spoken to people in the past about sort of water temperatures, and yeah, I mean, 10 or 11 double figures would be ideal, but coming from four and five and now yeah it just drops to 7.4 that's that's not bad you know it's not bad you know another another warm night in the day i'm just here a week too early that's what it is next week the temperatures look so much better but i'm here this week that's the thing so you've got to be forever hopeful and uh that actually looks all right 7.4 i'm quite pleased with that i'm pleased i had a look now This one, thought it was never going to go off. Dropped a bait right on the spot. Just a little, small handful of crumbed stuff, and uh, whew, at last it's gone off. God, that sun is so bright. Got one. <laughs> God, it's so bright that sun. Oh no, it's come off. Uh. Oh, I don't believe it. God, it's cut off as well. Oh. Cut off on something. It could have done. Oh.
must admit, I was absolutely gutted about losing that one. You know, you wait all that time and you do everything right, and then that happens. <sighs> Thing is, there's nothing sharp out there. You know, the lake has been drained down recently, so there was nothing there. It could only have been a, a pike bite off something like that. <sighs> yeah, all I could do was get the rod back out and try again. Right, I'm just on one of the daily walk rounds and well actually the third time I've been round today and yeah I'm just not seeing any signs really anywhere. Now the last two days there has been activity in the afternoon so it's still just a little bit too early yet. It's it's a, just gone midday, I think it's about up past twelve coming up at one o'clock and it's it's about three o'clock when the fish have showed but it's only really just out in front of where I'm standing now that's where they have showed the last couple of days the good news is that um, there's a, a warmer front moving in tonight last night it was down below freezing again I think minus one minus two uh, but tonight it's warming up and it's going to be something like 10 degrees tonight uh, and a bit of rain tomorrow forecast so I wish this had sort of happened a bit earlier in the week, but at least it's it's coming in sort of uh, late this afternoon or tonight, and well, maybe it will do the trick. I mean, it's, uh, it's hard to believe there's there's a lot of fish. There was 108 uh, different fish captured last year. There's a lot of captures, obviously, but there was 108 different fish captured. So. They're all out there somewhere. <laughs> I mean, it's strange when it's like this. It's hard to believe there's actually anything in here. You know, it's so sort of quiet and still. And out there, there's a hundred and odd big fish as well. You know, we're talking like plenty of 40s and 50s and a few 60s. All out there somewhere. Gutted yesterday to lose that one. I mean, you wait all that time for a bite and finally see a fish show, get a bait on it, done all the hard work, sitting there looking and making sure you're on the fish. Well, I did all that, get the run and then for, for no reason whatsoever, just cut off. I mean, there's no sharp stuff. I mean, it's only literally the lake has only just filled up again the last week, week and a half and it's been drained down. So there's no sharp stuff out there other than pike. All I can think was um, Kingfisher. <laughs> All I can think was that the light was uh, shining in the in the sunlight, and the pikes just chomped it <laughs> somehow. Because it is, it was. I mean, I'd hooked the fish from just out here, but it had actually gone right down to the the dam end, um, and that's where all the pike have been. So you know, such a gutter when you waited all that time and then, then you think you've got one only for the rug to be pulled from under your feet but it's not over yet and I'm still confident I'm going to get a fish or two certainly different today a little bit of drizzle and it's a lot milder fortunately it's it's come a bit late really, I mean it's last knockings today, last day today, we'll be off tomorrow. And this is now really, really nice conditions, still not seeing anything. Thought I might have heard a, a fish or two in the night, but it was still pretty quiet actually. But um, they've got to be moving about now, surely. This is absolutely lovely conditions, like a nice low pressure front's moved in, cloudy skies, bit of drizzle. So I've got 20 hours to try and catch one. And it looks better than ever for a fish. Just got to hope they play the game. As it was the last day, Jean Noel had organized a meal for everyone. He had come down with his wife and son and a few friends and we we're all gonna sit in the house and have pizzas and wine for dinner. And of course, you can guess what happened next. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh. 
<laughs> yeah. Ah, it's a big run. Hein? <laughs> oh, fantastic. I love it. Wait, 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 because... No, but the time has changed. He does the same way. Eh? The pressure goes down. It's a big difference for fishing. What, the last Nash? Yeah, new Nash ones. Ah, you make a real Nash? Yeah. Oh? Yeah, they make many, but these are <coughs> the new ones. These are nice. They love the color. Yeah, they're, they're okay. Just one nice carp <laughs> is enough. It's a big one, isn't it? I think he's one of the big ones. Yeah, I think so, mate. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Oh, look at Yes! He's in! <laughs> John, it's a big, big fish! Wow, look at that! Look! Uh, oh, that's great! Uh, it's a big, big. Oh, it's very cold, the water. <laughs> she, <laughs> she doesn't want to take out. Ali, come on! What a relief, eh? Blimey. Talk about cutting it fine. But to be honest, kept looking at the weather all the way through the week and it looked like today was going to be the best day. But, um, you know, talk about leaving it to the last minute. God, so pleased to actually get one. I mean, it looks huge and I know you might have got it when we were playing it, but John said, I think it's one of the big ones. And I said, yeah, that's a big one. It does look big, but well, just short of 50 pound it was. 49 and a half. <sighs> Beautiful secret garden mirror carp. First one of the year out the, of out the lake. <laughs> Lost that one earlier and was gutted about that, but finally got one, just as everyone was about to sit down for a goodbye meal. There we go. That was worth being patient for, wasn't it? Almost 50 pound of secret garden mirror. What a proper chunk of a fish. You know, sometimes they make you wait and it ain't always easy. Sometimes they're the ones that make you most happy. And I am so happy with that, really am. Last gasp mirror, that's what it is. <sighs> Happy days, right, let's get her back.
Ah, <laughs> well, as the old saying goes, all's well that ends well. And uh, left it late, but God, what a cracking fish to end up with. It's been a tough week for sure, you know, nothing's guaranteed in this world and like, you know, especially when it comes to carp fishing. On a week like this, um, a blank was definitely looking on the cards, you know, it was, well, the lake was frozen over when we got here and it had been for, you know, really cold for a few weeks. So the fish hadn't been fed, they hadn't been mobile, uh, they hadn't been fished for all year. You know, that was literally the first carp out of the lake this year. You know, sometimes it's easy and sometimes it isn't. People say to me, sometimes I make it look easy. And, you know, maybe, that, yeah, possibly sometimes it's, it's like that, but not always. This was one of those weeks it could have easily ended up in the blank. But experience, I suppose, tells me that I've got to be patient and uh, you've got a chance right up until you reel the rods in. Um, I do see people sort of give up after two or three days if they had not had a bite and it doesn't look good. But you can still turn things around and make it right in the end. As long as you keep fishing properly, keep doing the work, you know, a session can be changed in the, in the last hour as it can in the first hour. So, yeah, I've had to be patient this time. I've had to get everything sort of fairly as right. I mean, there might have been a better way of fishing, I don't know, but I did what I thought was right using little amounts of bait and, uh, you know, just trying to find where they were watching the water all the time that was so important because um, both of the bites in the end came from the spot where I saw two shows the other day now I've only seen three shows all week so um, to get a, two bites from where I saw two of the shows you know it shows again how much importance you've got to put on watching the water and looking out for shows this time of year you ain't going to see many every one is important so yeah time's just about run out but um yeah, god that was a cracking way to finish wasn't it <laughs> what a lovely fish I, i'm so happy with that this one's been a tough one um but it's ended up pretty good i'm so happy with that fish uh, and sometimes it's like that sometimes it's lovely to be catching loads of fish and the, hearing the alarms going off all the time but um quite often when it's a really tough one and you end up with a good fish right on last knock-ins, it almost means even more. And you know, that fish, I'm gonna remember that fish for a long, long time because it got me out of trouble <laughs> and uh, turned a tough week into a very successful one. You know, that, that's all I want, one fish like that during a week and I'm happy and I am very, very happy with that. So uh, yeah, on that note, um, just about it really so get the last little bits packed away and be on our way and uh hopefully you've enjoyed watching this anyway and, and uh seeing me going through the hard times um but it's been fun so yeah i'll see you next time